So today's message came to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. It's the story of Mary visiting her cousin Elizabeth. And right there, it says that the child in Elizabeth's womb jumped for joy, leaped for joy. In other words, the story as it goes, Mary and Elizabeth were related somehow. They speculated might be cousins. They were related. Mary was three months was three months in her pregnancy, Elizabeth six months in her pregnancy, and goes and visits Elizabeth. And right there, when Mary walks into the room, the child leaps for joy. And that's what I want to talk about, about that joy, about leaping. And it's especially important today because we know that in this world there needs to be an answer because we never thought it would get to this point. And we're standing right here in Pasadena every January 1st right behind me on the Colorado Boulevard. Millions of people greet the new year in person and on television because they say the new year is coming and there's something new. No one, no one expected this eight months ago that would, there would be a pandemic that would leave our churches empty, that would leave us in fear of walking around. No one expected that there would be an epidemic proportion, this misunderstanding between people, that there would be this type of racism revealed to the point that you cannot even discuss at this point. And no one ever imagined that we would have these fires on top of everything else that would destroy some of the most beautiful places in all of nature here in California. So what's the answer? And what I propose to share with you today is that the answer is with us and it's always being asked. You see, there's always questions that are being asked of us and some of them are important, some of them are not. Do, what, do you prefer Coke or Pepsi? It's, it's important to some degree, but it's not a game changer. Unless you're allergic to one and die, it really doesn't matter which one you drink. Those are inconsequential. Some questions change. Do you get your news from the internet? Do you get your news from newspapers, from the radio, from TV? Well, it depends. It changes from time to time what the content happens to be. Sometimes... We don't have answers, and we, so we resort to gossip. We make up stories. What happened to that guy? Well, we'll make up some story, and then we go along that way, and then we hear others telling us that, and that fortifies it. And so we have a way of creating stories, too. And then finally, there are the questions that are very important. Do you have a temperature today? Do you have high blood pressure? Very important. If you're walking into a crowded place, it's very important these days what your health situation is. Well, the same is true when God asks us questions. Throughout the Gospels, God asks us, Christ asks us. He never goes up to somebody and says, let me come and cure you. Whether you're blind, let me give you your sight. He first says, do you want to be cured? To the point where sometimes it's kind of humorous. You say, wait, doesn't he get it? Doesn't he get it? This man is sick. He needs a curing. What do you mean? Do you want to be healed? What a question. But that question is there to point that that question is not about God hearing our prayers, but us hearing our prayers. Of course, God knows that we need a healing. But sometimes we pray in such a way that is completely childish. We say, look at all the good things that I've done. Now, God, come and take care of these things that I need. And I've made you a list. I've been good, and so I need coronavirus wiped out. I need to make sure that racism is finished. And please put out the fires while you're at it. You know who does that? Santa Claus. He answers our prayers by, if you're good, he gives you a toy. If you're not, he, gives you, he doesn't give you. He bypasses you. That's not what you pray to God. And when you think about it for a moment, what does God give us? He gives us paradise. He gives us this world and he says, take care of it. And instead, we pollute it. And then we wonder, why is there cancer in this world? Well, we're breathing carcinogens. And then we say, God, don't you care? 
He gives us a world and he says, look, here's a beautiful world. And we set up walls and we set up armies and militaries and we fight each other and we kill each other. And we say, God, don't you care that there's wars and there's, there, there's uh, killing in this world? Of course I care. Of course he knows. But do we know that those answers are in our hands? A couple weeks ago we saw in Beirut, we said, well, what can we do? Innocent people. But you're storing explosives. Explosives in amount that there's no reason to. And yet we're doing it. And we look at Beirut because it exploded. But it could happen anywhere. It could happen anywhere. This morning we wake up, fires here in California. Big Sur, one of the most beautiful places on earth, is being destroyed. And we say, why? God, don't you care? Of course he cares. But do we care? And so today I'm telling you that, yes, there is an answer that we need to give to God. And that answer is a very simple one. It's the one that we hear today in the gospel message. It's the answer that St. Mary gives. Gives. She says, yes, my Lord, let it be to me according to your will. Mary, I need you to bring into this world Jesus Christ, love incarnate. Mary responds, let it be to me according to your will. That's the only prayer that God, Jesus gives us. Let your will, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the prayer that we need. What is your will, God? My will is that you love one another that you care for one another, that you care and become the sponsors for this world. And so when we look at a world that is crumbling, when we see intolerance, when we see racism uh, taking its head and moving forward, we have a response that we need to give. And that's the response that St. Mary gave. I will bring Christ in this world. What does that mean? I will bring love into this world. You see, love and Jesus are interchangeable, as St. Nerses Schnorali tells us. The name of love is Jesus. If A is equal to B, B is equal to C, then A equals C. Jesus is love. Jesus is the answer. Bring Jesus into this world. Be the bearer of Christ. Give birth to Christ in your life. It's something we haven't tried yet. We've tried everything else. We're fighting fire with fire instead of fire with a hose. Instead of fire, fighting fire with water. We're fighting hatred with more hatred instead of saying there is a greater answer. It's one that our Armenian people have tapped into because if you think about it, here's a group of people living at the cross-section of three major continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Every kind of person has gone in there. Every kind of person has raped and pillaged the people and the land, and yet we're standing and wet in a place called Pasadena. Armenians are gathered, and then on the internet, watching and remembering our prayers. Why? Because we've had a greater weapon than all the bombs. We've had the weapon of love. We've tried it in the past. Now the challenge is for us to try it in our lives. And it can't work. You know why? Because Christ tells us it works. And the proof is us. So I invite you today, respond to God. Respond to God in the way that St. Mary responded. Let it be to me according to your will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God bless you all.